In this lecture, we are going to implement pagination for our Express app. Currently, we do not have a UI, but we are also going to design a UI in this course from where we are going to consume the APIs which we have created. And in the UI, one of the features which we want is to show pagination. That means we only want to show a limited record in a single page. Let's say in the UI, we are going to display only 10 movies in a single page. To see the next list of the movies, the user will have to go to the next page. And each page will only contain 10 movies. So in our API, we want to allow users to select a page and the list of movies from that page will be sent to the user in the response. And to implement this feature in our API, we are going to use page and limit query string. So after the endpoint, the user can specify the page for which he want to get the data. Let's say two. And we also want to specify the limit. That means the number of records which that page should contain. So let's say 10. Okay, so when we send a request to this URL, in the result, we should have the list of movies from page two. And in that list, we should have only 10 movie objects. If I specify 100, in that case, we should get the result from page two. And in that page, we should have 100 records, 100 movie objects. Okay. Let's see how we can implement it in our Express app. So let's go to VS Code and let's go to this moviescontroller.js. So after limiting fields, we also want to add another feature called pagination. So for the pagination, we are going to use two special methods of Mongo's. So here we can use query. So basically on this query object, we are going to use the skip method. So this skip method, we need to tell basically how many records, how many results we want to skip. So for now, I will simply specify 10 here. Then we are going to chain another method called limit. And there we need to specify how many records we want in the result. So for that also, I will specify 10. Okay. And this is going to return a query object. Let's go ahead and let's store it back to this query variable. Now we are going to get the value for this limit method here. So basically currently we are passing 10, but we are going to get this value from the query string, right? In the query string, we are specifying the page and the limit field. So the value which we are passing to this limit method here, we are going to get it from the limit query string. So let me go ahead and let me create two variables. First variable I will call page and we are going to read this page from the query string. So we can say request.query.page. Okay. And let's create another variable. Let's call it limit. And again, we are going to read it from request.query.limit. All right. Now here, we also want to specify some default values for this page and limit. So basically, if the user has not specified the page and limit in the query string, in that case, we want to display the first page. So here, for this page variable, the default value should be 1. Because if the user is not specifying any page or limit in the URL, in the query string, in that case, we only want to display the first page. And in that first page, we want to display only 10 records. So for the limit, the default value is going to be 10. So this is how we can specify a default value. Now keep in mind that in the query object, we are going to receive the value for these query strings as a string. And we need to convert those string values to a number type. So here to do that, we can simply multiply these query strings, these string values by one. Okay, so this will convert the string value into a number type. So here, let's simply go ahead and let's pass this limit variable. Now we need to calculate the value for the skip method. So instead of passing 10 here, we need to pass the value dynamically, right? So basically, let me put a comment here. So in page one, we want to display records from one to 10. That means here we want to skip zero items. Then in the page two, we want to display records from 11 to 20. So that means here for the page two, we want to skip 10 items. In the same way, for the page three, we want to display items from 21 to 30. So in this case, we want to skip 20 items. So 
we need to calculate how many items, how many records we want to skip based on the page number and the limit. So to do that, what we can do is, let me go ahead and let me create another variable and I'll call it skip. And here we will say page minus one multiplied by limit. Okay, so let's say in the URL, the value for the page is one. So one minus one will be zero into limit 10 will be zero. So in that case, for the first page, we don't want to skip anything. So here we need to pass the value zero, right? So this expression for the first page, it will return zero. For the second page, we want to skip 10 items because as you can see, the limit is 10. So for the second page, it will be two minus one, which will be one into 10. So the result will be 10. So for the second page, the skip value will be 10. For the third page, the page value is three. So three minus one, two into 10, it will be 20. So for the third page, we want to skip 20 records. So this expression will return us that value and that we can pass to this skip method. So here I'm simply going to pass this skip variable. Inside this script variable, we are going to have the value which we actually want to skip. Okay, now let's save these changes and let's test this out. So let's go to Postman and there, let me first specify page one. And since we have only eight records, only eight movie documents, here I'm going to specify the limit as, let's say, three. So when I make a request here, in the result, we should have only three movie objects, as you can see. Okay. Then if I specify page as two, in the second page also, we should have only three movie items, but that page should not contain these three, which we have from the first page. If I click on the send button, here also we have received three movie objects. And if I specify page as three, here we should only have two movie objects because in total we have eight movie objects, right? So here you can see the length is two and in here we have only two movie objects. But if I specify four here, in that case, let's see what happens. So when I click on the send button, you see we are receiving some response, but in the response, we don't have any movie object, right? Because we don't have any other movie object which we can display in page four. So in this case, we are getting some response where the status is success, but for the movies, there is no data. So instead of getting this response here, if on a given page, there is no movie records which can be displayed, there we want to show an error instead of showing this response. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do that. For that, let's go ahead and let's first implement this if statement because here, first we want to check if the query string object contains a page query string or not. So for that, we can say request.query.page. Okay, if and only if this query string object contains a page query string, then only we want to proceed. So here, what we want to do is, first, we want to count all the movie documents which we have in the MongoDB database. For that, I'm going to create a variable. I will call it movies count. And on this movie model, we are going to call a method count documents. And it is going to return us all the documents from the movies collection. And we are storing it inside this movies count variable. And now we can check if the value stored in this skip variable, if it is greater than or equal to the movies count, in that case, we want to throw an error. So basically, let's say movies count is eight in our case, but the user has specified page as four and limit as three. So in that case, the skip value will be four minus one, which is three into limit. So three into three, nine. So nine is greater than the movies count because movies count is going to be eight in our case. So since this movies count is eight and this skip is nine, we cannot skip nine movie objects and then show some new records in the next page because we don't have any other movie object to be shown in the next page, right? So in that case, we simply want to throw an error. And here, let's also specify the error message saying that maybe this page is not found. Okay, and here, since we are throwing an error at this line, if 
this condition is satisfied that means if the skip is greater than movies count in that case an error will be thrown from here and that will be handled in this catch block okay let's see that let's save the changes let's go to postman and let's go ahead and let's try to make a new request to this same url where the page is 4 and the limit is 3 so this time we should get an error and for some reason it is not working let's go back to vs code so here vehicle code. all right so here we also need to use the await keyword because we need to wait for the result to come back from this count documents this count documents is going to return a promise and we need to wait for that promise to get resolved or rejected all right with this let's save the changes let's go back to postman again and now let's make a request and now you can see here we have this error message this page is not found but if i specify page as three in that case we should get two movie results so you can see here we have length as two and in the result we have two movie objects all right so in this lecture we learned how to implement the pagination functionality for our express app now when we are going to use this functionality in the ui from the ui we only need to send the page and limit query string to make this functionality work we don't need to write any extra logic in the ui this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day